Hey everyone, this is Dan with DPS Breakdowns. In today's video, we're going to analyze Jason Nolf's 2019 NCAA Championship run. I'm going to run through all five of Nolf's matches in chronological order and break down the sequences that I found the most interesting and educational. So let's jump right in. We'll start with Nolf's first match in the tournament. We got a really nice angle pick here. So we'll go back and take a closer look. So you see here, Nolf's got this right arm over tie. Opponent has a collar tie here. And he's looking for this slide by attempt. So you can see Nolf's left hand's gonna find his opponent's wrist of that collar tie, and he's looking to slide the arm past. As the opponent defends that, you can see that he's gonna plant his left leg. You can see right here. And it puts it in a really good position for Nolf to chain the ankle pick to this. So he's gonna maintain that right arm collar tie. He's gonna level change to his left knee and his left hand is gonna reach for that ankle. And you can see the important detail. He keeps the head about an even height with his. So as he changes his level, he stays relatively ear to ear with his opponent, which helps break the posture, makes the finish a lot easier. So he's gonna pull that ankle out, keep pulling down on that head, and it's gonna force the opponent down to the mat. From there, Nolf's just gonna spin around, get his two. So let's see that one more time. So over tie, slide by attempt, the opponent plants and squares, and then that same leg that just planted is now a good target for the ankle pick. Nolf's gonna grab it, brings the opponent down, gets the two. So just a few seconds later in that same match, we have a very strong pinning sequence. Let's take a look. You can see Nolf has that far elbow, and he's gonna cinch in the cradle here. Controls that far hip, and he gets the pin. So, one thing I, I constantly see Nolf do when he's on the ground is he hunts for the far elbow here. So you can see how Nolf's using his left arm. He brings it underneath the chin, and he's grabbing just above the elbow at the opponent's right triceps. And what he wants to do is collapse that arm. Once he can collapse that arm, he really twists it, it becomes easy to break his opponent's base down so he can bring his opponent off of his hands and knees and start flattening him out where turning him is going to become a lot easier. So there he's flattening him out. You, still, you see he still has that triceps control with his left arm. And you can't see it here, but Nolf puts his right hand, right hand and wrist behind his opponent's right knee. And so what he wants to do is he wants to walk the opponent's upper body, really his head, as close to that, as close to the opponent's right knee as possible. So watch how Nolf's going to use his legs here. He's really driving off both feet. So he's using his entire body to twist the opponent, bring his head close to his knee, and that's going to allow Nolf to lock his hands. Once he locks the hands, he's going to wedge himself underneath here, and he's going to pull his opponent to his back. And you can see he still has that same triceps control that he's had. His right, Nolf's right hand is going to grab his wrist here. Little hip escape out. Controls that far hip. And that's going to do it. So one more time. Gets that far triceps control. Collapses the base. Walks the opponent all the way to his knee. Does this little hip escape. Create a little bit of space so he can get the opponent flat. And that's gonna be it. Moving on to the second round, we've got Nolf versus John Van Brill out of Rutgers. Little trivia for you guys. John Van Brill is actually one of only two people that has a win over Jason Nolf. The other, of course, being Isaiah Martinez. Van Brill's win came via injury default, but still. So let's see what we got here. Nolf's gonna look for a dresser dump. Switches off to a single. And he's gonna kick the leg out. Gets the two. So let's take a look. So right here, Van Brill's changing his level here, maybe doing a, a fake shot. This is gonna give Nolf the opportunity to lock in this front headlock. So you have to always be careful against a guy like Nolf. You can't hang out on your knees too long. He's gonna he's gonna snatch up that front headlock position. And right here, Nolf's gonna hit this move a little bit later in this video. 
but you can see Nulf's reaching with his right hand for Van Brill's right knee, and he's actually going to miss it. And so instead of hitting that dress or dump, he's going to switch off to the single leg. One thing Nolf does so well, and is really important, is he builds up to his feet so effectively. So as soon as he's here, he's not going to hang out on his knees too long. You can see it builds up to the left foot, then the right foot, and now he's up on both feet where it's a lot easier to finish a takedown. Nolf's going to, one thing he I see him do often is he, lock, he likes to lock his hands right underneath the opponent's knee here. So you can see Nolf's right elbow is right underneath his opponent's knee. And he's gonna use that, he's, he essentially pulls up to get his opponent's other foot, uh, his opponent's right foot off the mat in this situation. And that's gonna make the sweep a lot easier. So as Nolf gets tall, he pulls up on that with his locked hands underneath the knee and that raises his opponent's right foot off the mat. And from there, Nolf can kick it out very easily, bring his opponent down to the mat, get the two. So once more, opponent does this fake. Nolf's gonna snatch up that front headlock, goes for the dresser dump, misses it, and then transitions to the single leg, builds the base. He's gonna elevate up, kick the leg out. One other little thing too. High level guys are really good about keeping the elevation. So Nolf has the leg here. What you don't want to do is let go of the leg as soon as the opponent hits the ground because guys, especially at the high levels, can scramble out really effectively. So you can see Nolf keeps that leg laced. The opponent's would be his left leg. Nolf's going to keep that in his armpit until he secures the hips here. Moving on. Nolf goes for the single leg, gets the feet quickly. Another sweep of the leg. Powerful takedown, let's see. One thing you see Nolf do a lot is grab over ties. So the opponent has a right arm collar tie. Nolf is really comfortable reaching over top of his opponent's collar tie, grabbing what's called the over tie with his left. And just before he shoots here, watch how Nolf brings his right hand to the opponent's collar tying arm, right at the elbow. And he's gonna use that, the right hand, to push his opponent's elbow past his head as he changes his level. So one thing, I, I know I mentioned this in prior videos, think about the opponent's lines of defense. A big, a big line of defense is the opponent's hands. So if you can clear the hands, which Nolf's doing here, you're in really good shape to start getting in on the legs. So he clears the elbow, left arm's gonna snake around, builds up quickly. So little details on, on this build up. You can see right here, Nolf doesn't even have his, he really doesn't even have his hands locked at this point. He's just gonna have his left arm snaked around and he's gonna build up just like that, up to the feet. And again, the quicker you can get to the feet, the easier the finish will be. Just like in the prior takedown, he's gonna sweep out the leg. This time he doesn't, doesn't do quite that same elevation. He's just gonna time it perfectly. So he, what you want to do is time it so when the opponent the opponent's going to be hopping around to maintain balance and as they're hopping up and the feet leaves leaves the ground the foot leaves the ground rather that's a really good time to kick the leg out if the leg has weight on it it's going to be tough to kick out but as the leg hops up he kicks it and then watch his right hand he's going to use it like a collar tie and use that to bring his opponent down so he kicks the leg out from underneath him and then he brings the opponent straight down to the mat with that right arm collar tie really powerful He's gonna maintain elevation with his left hand. And again, that's just gonna reduce the opponent's ability to scramble. I think he's actually gonna get two back points in that sequence there. So one more time. Really nice setup here to get past the hands. Right arm comes across, beats that elbow. He also gets elbow deep on his own shot. He's gonna get up to the feet. Really good timing. Kicks that leg out just as the opponent's hopping up. Collar tie, brings the opponent down, maintains the elevation, gets the two and then two more for the back exposure. This next sequence is gonna be really interesting. Let's take a look and then we'll slow it down. So Nolf hits an ankle pick off of an overhook, a little bit unorthodox. And we get into this dog fight position. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Opponent's gonna step over with the hook and Nolf's gonna roll, and he's gonna end up on top. So let's go slower here. 
So first, this ankle pick is cool. You don't see it off of the overhook very often. As the opponent builds his base up from this front headlock position, Nolt's gonna grab the ankle, maintaining his overhook here. Bring the opponent down. Doesn't get the takedown, but does bring his opponent to the mat. And here we're in a position, I called it a dog fight. That's the reason I call it that is because that's what this is known in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. A fairly common position. The opponent, or rather uh, Van Bril is gonna have this underhook is gonna grip the far, the, the waist of Jason Nolf so that he's on the far hip with his hand. And Nolf's gonna maintain the overhook. Both guys post it out in a hand to maintain height. And Van Bril's gonna step over and get this hook with his left leg. So you guys, some of you guys saw the video I just put out recently that talked about this. And the reason why this hook can be really effective is it's gonna it's gonna get Van Bril's hips on top of Jason Nolf's. Usually the person with the higher hips is gonna have an advantage here. And this, the hook is gonna lock, it's gonna anchor him down. So he's gonna be, on, his hips are stacked on top here. But watch how Nolf rolls out of this here and ends up on top. So what, what, what's here an advantageous position for Van Bro, this hips on top, becomes a disadvantageous position when Nolf rolls through because now it's reversed. Now Van Bro's hips are, are low and Nolf's are high on top. And so I think I think a, a, a key here is that Van Bril is going to lose his hook mid roll. So Nolf does a good job. He drives off of his feet and he gets his hips through. And so you see Van Bril's right hook that he has here. He loses it mid roll, and now he doesn't have any control of the hips. And Nolf's hips are going to settle on top. So what I'm wondering, and I don't know the, really the answer to this, if Van Bril were to lock a figure four here. So if he were to bring his right leg over top of his left foot. I'm wondering if he would have, would, would, would have been able to maintain control, maybe even get some back points if he was able to lock Nolf in here because Nolf, if, I mean, look at this position right here. He, you know, if, if he gets stuck there, that's gonna be back points. I don't know the answer to that, but it's something interesting to think about. So let's run through that just one more time. So we have this cool ankle pick off the overhook. Dogfight position. Van Bril's gonna step around, gets his hook in, but he's gonna lose the hook as Nolf rolls through. So nice counter by Nolf. Nolf rolls through, his hips are on top, and now he's maintaining that overhook here. This next sequence is gonna pick up right where we left off here. So Nolf is on top after rolling through, and he's gonna be in a good position to work for the pin here. So let's see what happens, and then we'll slow it down. So he's got his opponent's arm behind his back, He's maintaining that underhook here. Now he's controlling the hand. And he's looking to get his opponents back to the mat. And that's gonna be the end of the period. So opponent gets saved by the bell there. So let's take a look. So this is where they landed after that roll. The opponent's gonna to try to limp his arm out of there because if he can free his left arm, he can get his chest to the mat and then kind of work from there and try to get out of the bottom position rather than defending the pin. But Nolf, once he has his arm, he's not gonna give it up. So you can see he sneaks his left arm through, there's a little transfer there, left arm comes through, right arm finds the wrist, and now he's got his, arm, his opponent's arm pin behind his back here. Really bad position to be in. He's gonna switch back to the underhook here. So one thing to note here is that Nolf, when, he, when he's controlling that arm, his opponent's left arm, he's not gonna control it up, up by the shoulder. He's gonna control it uh, more at the elbow. So there's gonna be a lot better leverage there. The opponent's gonna be a lot weaker when you're controlling him at the elbow than if you were to try to turn him by controlling his shoulder. He's also grabbing the head with his left arm here. So you can see Nolf's right arm is positioned right by the elbow here. He's gonna walk the arm up. And now he switches up even higher on the lever here. He's gonna grab the hand with four fingers but now he comes back to that elbow. And that's gonna be the end of the period. So I think the big takeaway here is the elbow control is so key. So the opponent can't get his, get his chest to the mat because his elbow is pinned behind his back here. We're now in the quarterfinals. Another great looking ankle pick here. 
So this is, uh, we'll call this a rapid fire ankle pick. So Nolf's gonna grab the head and the ankle at about the same time. And he's actually gonna initiate his level change before he even gets that collar tie. So he starts dropping down, and then he's gonna get the collar tie and the ankle. Maintains that ear to ear position, so he doesn't wanna be, doesn't want a disparity in height between his, his head and his opponent's head. And he's gonna pull the ankle out. And again, just really trying to drive home the importance of maintaining control of legs, usually through elevation, um, until you absolutely have control. So right here, Nolf elevates the ankle, still has the collar tie, and he still has control. Even at this point, he still has the ankle. So he's not gonna let it go until the very end, right here. Next clip. Opponent's gonna do a little fake. Nolf's gonna counter, sweeps the leg out. Gets the two. So right here, watch how the opponent steps forward with his left leg. He's gonna use his right hand to initiate the fake. And Nolf reacts to it, but notices the opponent's left leg a little bit far forward, and he's gonna jump on it. So he reaches for it, right hand posted, left hand finds the ankle. And look at how quick he gets up to the feet here. He's gonna bring that right elbow underneath the knee like he usually does, the left hand's controlling the ankle, right at the heel. And just like he's been doing, he's gonna time it so that he's kicking the leg out as it's coming off the mat. So you can see the heel starting to come off the mat here. And Nolf's gonna kick it out right as it comes up. So really good timing. Brings the opponent straight down. Notice how Nolf keeps the ankle until the very end here. One more time. Opponent fakes. Nolf dives on that ankle that's a little bit far forward. Kicks the leg out, maintains control of that same leg. Gets the two. Level change. Nolf comes to the feet on the double leg. And he's gonna finish it, and that's a hell of a double leg finish. Let's go back. So no fancy setup here, he's just gonna level change. And I don't know, it's hard to know like what exactly Nolf was thinking here, but one thing that's apparent is the opponent doesn't have very good defensive grips at the point that Nolf is shooting. So I don't know if Nolf felt that or it was just kinda lucky or what, but the opponent initially has a strong collar tie here on the inside with his elbow, but he's gonna switch it and come over the top. And this is gonna give Nolf this inside space and his opponent really doesn't have his hands in a good position to prevent Nolf's penetration here. So Nolf's gonna get in, and you can see he gets in elbow, elbows deep here, which is a, which is a really good sign that you've uh, gotten in sufficiently deep. He's gonna get to his feet quickly, and he's gonna look to finish it. And here he's gonna get his hips underneath him and lift his opponent. So good tenacity here, he's, he gets in, opponent defends fairly well, Nolf's trying to drive through. Opponent's cross-facing. And right here, you can see Nolf, it's almost like a power clean. He's gonna get his hips underneath and just lift. And he gets his opponent at that perpendicular angle where he has really no ability to defend at this point. Nolf's gonna drop him straight to a hip. Get his two. One last time. Nice level change. Drives on his feet and he's just gonna lift them. Really, really impressive. Next. Nolf's gonna level change. Dumps him to a hip. He's gonna hook the leg. And he's got the opponent trapped on his hip at this point. And the opponent's just gonna concede the takedown. So first thing to notice here, opponent's got this left arm post on Nolf's right shoulder. Nolf's gonna get that elbow tie with his right hand. And you can see how he is pulling up on his opponent's triceps as he's lowering his level. So it's gonna allow him to clear that hand. He's also gonna get past the opponent's other arm, the right arm. So right here, he's already passed both of his opponent's hands. And he's gonna get in on that, it looks like a low single here on the left. Once he's here, so Nolf wants to get some height. He wants to get underneath his opponent. 
And so he's going to let go with his left hand. You can see how he posts it on the mat here. That's going to make it easier for him. He's also going to move in slightly. Makes it easier for him to get his spine nice and straight and get tall. Once he's here, the opponent's going to be looking to mess with his ankles here. And Noel's going to dump him to his hip right away. So he dumps him to his opponent's right hip. Opponent's already reaching for the ankles here. And watch how Nolf steps over with his right leg. He's going to hook the opponent's ankle. And what this is going to do is it's going to prevent his opponent from being able to get his right leg back. So his right leg is now stuck underneath. And it's going to make it difficult for him to build his base off of his hip. Nolf's also going to reach. You can see it right there. He reaches with his right hand and grabs the opponent's other ankle. So now both of the opponent's feet are stuck. And he's still stuck on his hip. It's going to be difficult for him to work any kind of defense here. It's going to scrambles as well are going to be more difficult to generate. And Nolf just kind of hangs out here with both of his opponent's ankles controlled. And the opponent just concedes it. So one more time. Elbow tie, nice level change. Uses that post to build up. Dumps the opponent to the hip and right away is looking to hook right there. Opponent's right leg is now stuck. And now his left leg is controlled as well. And Nolf just kind of hangs out here. The opponent eventually has nowhere to go and he just concedes the two. This next sequence is really cool. Opponent's going to be in this front headlock looking position here. Looks to spin around and Nolf is able to escape and get a shot of his own. And he's going to get some back points here. So this is, this kind of illustrates one thing I love about Nolf is that he does a lot of movements that would seem counterintuitive, at least to me. So opponent's in this strong front headlock position. He's gonna do a good job spinning around. You see how he spins through and he clears Nolf's right arm. So, but instead of trying to spin with him, so like if this was me, if I was Nolf right now, I would be probably trying to spin to my, to my right um, to stay with him. But Nolf goes the other way. So instead of trying to spin and follow, he takes an op the opposite direction. He spins around the other way. And you can see he takes a big step with his right foot here. And then his other leg spins through so that he faces. So just one more time. Instead of trying to go the same way, he spins the opposite direction. And then his opponent is in this lower position here, Nolf standing. He's gonna lock in this front headlock position straight into a single. Head's gonna be on the outside for this one. So as he comes through, he's ready to counterattack right away. Gets on the head, jumps on this single with the head to the outside, and he brings the opponent down here. Brings him right down to his right hip. Now one of the one of the things you have to look out for on, an, on a head to the outside shot, so you see this on high crotches a lot, but singles too, is that the opponent can start getting into that crackdown position and can start spinning around towards the back. Um, but Nolf's gonna put a quick stop to that. He's gonna reach and catch the head here. So the opponent's starting to scoot around. Nolf's gonna keep the opponent's right leg elevated up, and he's gonna grab the head here with his left arm so he catches it as the opponent's spinning through. And this is gonna allow him to lock in this really tight position here where he's got his left arm wrapped around the head now, still has the elevation with his right, and the opponent has nowhere to go here. He can't turn in anymore because you can see his right leg is, is elevated up. And so eventually he's gonna be able to clear his head and belly down here. So let's run through that one more time. Nice front headlock position for the opponent. Spins through, Nolf spins the other way and he's right on the counter attack. Head outside single, dumps him down, maintains the elevation so he goes elbow deep with that right arm and then his left is gonna catch the head as the opponent starts spinning around. So he still has that elbow deep control with his right. Now he's got this tight front headlock position. Stacks him up here. I think he gets a few back points for this. Opponent eventually frees his head and bellies down. Really cool sequence. Here the opponent's gonna shoot. Null's gonna spin around to the single leg. Starts looking for the trip. Grabs ahead and finishes the takedown. This one reminds me a lot. I put out a video recently with Takuto Adaguro, and this is very looks very much like what Adaguro was doing. 
where whenever the opponent, whether it's a snap down or the opponent himself shoots, the opponent is in this position where the hands are on the mat. So you can see the opponent's left hand here and then the right hand here are on the mat. And this is a great time. So commonly people will look for a, a go behind. They try to just spin around, which is a great option. But another option is to go for the legs. So right now the opponent's left leg in this situation is completely unguarded. Both of his hands, which would normally be defending are stuck on the mat. And so it's a really good time to attack a single leg. Pretty, you know, it's, it's wide open. So as Nolf spins through, he's gonna grab the leg here. Gets his lace, has the hands locked here. He goes wrist to wrist in this position. And he's looking for that trip that he's been hitting throughout. So right here, he tries to kick the leg out. Doesn't quite work. Goes for it with the other leg now. So with his left, kicks the leg. It's not gonna trip his opponent all the way to the mat, but look how it makes the opponent post his hands here. And as he posts his hands, now his head is in this low position and Nolf's gonna grab it. So he jumps on it with his left arm, grabs the front headlock, possibly looking for a cradle here. He doesn't lock it in, but either way he gets the two, brings the opponent down. So really, really effective way to finish that. So watch one more time, opponent shoots, hands are on the mat, Nolf's gonna spin through for that single. Elevates right away, wrist to wrist, tries to kick the leg out, doesn't quite get it, but just getting the ha opponent's hands to the mat, so now the opponent's weight is on his hands, makes it a lot easier to finish. Nolf's gonna club the head here, drive forward, gets the finish. This next one's interesting. I don't wanna, I'm not gonna analyze this whole sequence. I wanna focus on a specific portion of it. So we're just running through it at normal speed right now. Opponent's on the ankle here. Really common defense, grab the opponent's ankles. Nolf's gonna step over his opponent's leg. Watch Nolf's right foot right now. Look at that. He steps on his opponent's ankle. Comes around to the other side, finishes it. So I'm gonna show the whole thing, but I'm gonna just go quickly through the beginning. Nolf shoots in. Gets into this scramble position. Opponent has like a crotch lock here. Grabs the ankle. So right here, Nolf's gonna use, watch Nolf's left leg. He's gonna step it around. And in this position, you can see Nolf's left hand. You can see it there underneath the opponent's right heel. And watch this transfer. So Nolf's gonna take his right foot and step it right on his opponent's ankle. And that's gonna allow Nolf to let go of that ankle now. So he went from controlling it with his hand to now just stepping on it with his foot, which really serves the same purpose, but now it frees up his hand to do other things. So we, the, the opponent's right ankle is still stuck because it's got Nolf's weight on it. And Nolf's gonna look to control his opponent's waist or the hip with his left hand. Opponent has a wizard in as well. Now Nolf comes back to that ankle with his right hand. He's gonna limp, looks like he limp arms out of here. And then I can't tell if this is intentional or not. It, it would be kind of insane if it was, but Nolf looks like he steps on the opponent's other ankle here. So watch Nolf's left leg, steps on the ankle there, which causes the opponent to lose his balance and fall to his hip here. And Nolf kind of falls as well. You can see both guys have a hand post but what allows Nolf to win in this exchange is the elevation, of course. So you, can, you can't quite see Nolf's grip, but look at the opponent's, his right leg is elevated off the mat here. And that's gonna allow Nolf to finish. So let's just start in this position here. Nolf, step, he's controlling with his hand. He switches, so now his foot is stomping on the, on the leg and the ankle. Now his ankle comes back, he's gonna limp arm out. And then again, I, don't, I really don't know if this was just kind of lucky or if this was intentional. It'd be kind of crazy if it was intentional. But Nolf is able to kick out the opponent's other ankle, bring him down to the hip, and then maintain his elevation for the finish. So this next one might be my favorite clip in the whole video. Opponent's gonna take a shot here and watch Nolf kick the leg out. And he's gonna lock in a cradle here. Drives forward, he's gonna flip him over his elbow. And time's gonna expire before he's able to get any kind of pin. So let's see this one. 
opponent's gonna go for the shot here. He just misses it, by the way. Looks for some, some kind of ankle pick here. Um, Nolf gets the foot out of the way. Grabs an underhook with his left. And he's gonna kick this leg out. And I love, Nolf's timing is just so good on all, anytime he's sweeping a leg out, whether it's on a single leg or this, this uh, foot trip here, he just has the timing down so well. So watch the opponents, see how his left foot is in the air right now? As he plants the left, it's gonna shift the weight to his left foot and now his right foot gets light. And that's exactly when Nolf kicks the foot out, which is really cool. Kicks the leg out. It's not gonna quite take his opponent down to a hip, but it's gonna make him drop to that right knee. And you can see the opponent's left leg, his left knee rather, and his head are pretty close together right here, which is always gonna be a good time to look for a cradle. And that's what Null's gonna do. You can see he comes around the head, his right arm's underneath his opponent's left knee, and he locks it in. And he drives forward, the opponent's posted on his elbow, on his right elbow here, and Nolf just takes him right over it. Straight to his back. Time expires. So just one more time, this is, I love this one. Opponent shoots in. Nolf gets his foot back, grabs his underhook on the left. Perfect timing on this kick out as the opponent shifts his weight to his left foot. Nolf kicks the right foot. Opponent falls down to a knee. And he's in, a he's in a position where he's vulnerable for the cradle. Nolf locks it in. Drives him to his back. Awesome. So we are finally on to the semifinals. We spent a lot of time on that last one. So this is going to be a rematch of the 2018 NCAA Finals. Nolf versus Hidley. And let's get it going. Nolf's going to shoot in for that single on his right. Looking for the elevation, he's got the hands locked underneath the underneath the knee. And the opponent's gonna grab a leg. Lock his hands. And he's just gonna wait it out. Get the stalemate call. So this is a super common thing that happens at the high levels of wrestling, of college wrestling. You can see Nolf, left arm, finds that tricep, comes underneath. Shoots that nice single head to the inside. Quickly builds the base up to the feet. And he's got that palm that looks like a palm to palm. Hands locked here right underneath his opponent's knee. And watch how Hidley's gonna hang on Nolf here. So he's got, Hidley's got a, this, that wizard with his left arm, that overhook. And he's gonna take both of his feet off the mat here. Posts the hand and he's hanging all of his weight on Nolf's right arm. And this is gonna force Nolf, it's gonna off balance him slightly and make him step that left leg across. See how he crosses his feet like that? And that's gonna give Hidley the ability to grab that ankle. So that, that's what he's looking for. He's looking for something to grab. Nolf posts that foot right next to Hidley's posted arm. And that's gonna allow him to grab that ankle, bring his other arm around the back of the knee. And he's just gonna cinch it up. He's gonna lock his hands. You can see it there. And eventually he switches to that S grip. And it's just against a strong opponent. It's just so stifling when you're in this position. Nolf's not in danger of getting scored on here because the, the opponent's flattened out. But it's just the, the, the opponent can hang out here for a long time. And eventually the refs will call a stalemate here. So it's a, it's a good way to defend when you, get it, when you have a shot taken on you like this. So one more time, Nolf shoots in. Hilly locks up this strong wizard. It's gonna hang on him, grab that ankle that's offered. Lock his hands and just wait it out. Ref blows the whistle and they're gonna reset it to the feet. So this next scramble ends up being a really pivotal moment in the match. Really exciting scramble, let's take a look. Run it all the way through first. Hidley's gonna get in on a single of his own. He's at the heel, gets to his, gets to his feet. Nolf's gonna roll through, grab an ankles of his own. And here it's really just a battle for base. Right now Hidley's on both knees, Nolf's stuck on his right hip. Both guys trying to work their way up to a superior base. Nolf's rolling through, he now has elevation, but he's gonna lose the foot. 
and they actually they initially scored as a two for Hidley. They eventually reverse it pretty in a pretty controversial move. But let's take a close look here. So it appears to me that Nolf was planning on shooting at the same time as Hidley, and Hidley was just a little bit quicker. So right now Hidley has that wrist control with his left arm. Nolf's going to bring his other arm across, strip it. And the, the, way, the way that Nolf brings his right foot here makes me think that he was going to shoot as well. You can also see he's level changing. But Hidley is just a little bit quicker, and so Nolf bringing his right foot forward ends up being a liability for him. So Hidley level changes here, drives off that back foot. You can see Hidley's right foot. Nice single, head to the inside. Spine's nice and straight here. He's going to find the heel with his left hand. Really good way to control the whole leg is just grab it right at the lowest part, right at the heel. And he gets up to his feet. Nice strong position with his head. Nolf's going to lock in the wizard here. And Hidley's going to do a limp arm, but as soon as he does it, Nolf's already rolling through. So Hidley brings his arm out as Nolf rolls underneath for this funky type roll. And so one of the one of the benefits of this kind of roll that Nolf's doing is that it will usually off balance the offensive wrestler and make them let go of your leg that they're controlling, which you can see right here, Hidley has to use his hands to post. So that's why guys, that's why one reason why those funk rolls are can be really effective. But Hidley does a nice job here. You can see how he's, even though his right hand's on the mat, he cinches his right elbow to his right knee. And that's gonna serve the same purpose. It's gonna lock in Nolf's right leg. And so Nolf is stuck on his right hip. He's not gonna be able to get that right leg back here because it's stuck. So he's gonna remain stuck on his right hip. Hidley's in pretty good shape here. He's on his knees, which is generally gonna be a better position than being stuck on a hip. Nolf's attacking the ankles here. And then Hidley's gonna switch up his control. So he, he lets go of Nolf's bottom leg, Nolf's right leg, and he's gonna bring his other arm, Hidley's left arm's gonna come around here. And so Nolf's right leg is free, he's gonna start hopping on it here. But Hidley's got a good base at this point, his spine's nice and, nice and tall, head's high. Definitely in a superior position at this point. Nolf's still got that ankle though. They're gonna keep battling for the base here. Nolf's gonna roll through again. And then Nolf's able to bring Hidley's ankle up to his shoulder, which is gonna be an effective movement. So Hidley's in a good position, but the problem now is that his, his left foot is stuck on Nolf's left shoulder. But, crucial factor here, or crucial occurrence, Nolf's gonna lose that ankle. So if Nolf can keep that foot elevated, he's not in a whole lot of danger but he loses it here. So Hidley's gonna yank it out, Nolf loses it. You see Nolf reaches for it here, but it's already gone. And as soon as he loses that, he's in a terrible position. He's basically taken down. And so the last ditch thing he can do is to get try to get his butt off the mat and get up to his feet, which he does. And so it just, what becomes controversial here is whether right here, or even we'll go frame by frame, right here, is that a, is that a takedown? And I, I don't know the answer, um, but it's certainly very close. But in any event, Nolf's able to build up. And then once he gets his hips off the mat here, Hidley doesn't, if, that's, if that wasn't a takedown initially, then Hidley has to return him back to the mat to get his two, which he does not have time to do because the time runs out. So just one more time, a lot of action there. The Cliff Notes version, essentially both guys are trying to improve their base, trying to use elevation to bring the other person's base down. You can see that roll. Nolf's on the ankles. I love that. I love how Hidley's still posting that right arm on the mat, but he uses his elbow to control the, the foot. It's pretty, very effective. Eventually he switches legs, starts coming around. Nolf's gonna stay persistent here. Does a good job elevating, but he loses that foot. And that's, that's the difference here. Loses that foot. And then again, they call it a takedown initially, then they reverse it. Now we're in the second period. Nice counter attack by Nolf. Looking to lock in a cradle. It's gonna settle for the two here. So Hidley's gonna take a shot. Uses that left arm as a attacking hand. 
It's gonna miss it. Nolf locks in that front headlock right away. So you can see Nolf's left arm wraps around the head and he's looking for Hidley's left leg. So similar to what we saw earlier, um, nice way both opponent's hands are on the mat after the shot. The legs are usually wide open. This time Nolf's gonna stay on the head and he's looking for the cradle. Look how close he gets, look at that. So it, it, it kind of sets a trap for Hidley. It's interesting. If Hidley continues to kind of try to stay square with, with Nolf and circle towards his left, he might get stuck in the cradle. Nolf might be able to lock that cradle in. So to prevent it, Hidley's got to get his spine nice and straight, bring his head away from his knee. As he does that though, he's giving Nolf the two. So it's kind of a nice dilemma. Nolf puts him in either you resist the takedown, keep trying to spin with me, and I'm gonna lock this cradle in, or just give me the two, and Hidley picks that second option. So last sequence of this match, Nolf's up one point, third period, 17 seconds left. Hidley's gonna get in on a shot here. Done a single, gets up to his feet. He's in a position Nolf is in a lot. Runs the pipe, but Nolf's gonna get that right leg back and he's gonna hold on and he's gonna win. So really, I watched this live and really exciting finish to this match. I love this entrance by Hidley. You can see, watch Hidley's right hand here on Nolf's triceps. He's gonna open that arm up as he posts his left hand to the mat. He's gonna slide on his hip here. And that's gonna allow him to really close the distance and get inside. And he gets past Nolf's left arm here. And he's able to get his right hand in the back of Nolf's knee. And watch how he runs, runs it down. So he, there's a lot of space here. He's gotta close the distance. And so he's gonna use his feet to run and close that space. Heads on the outside here, maybe looking for a double finish. But watch Nolf. Nolf throws, basically clubs his head, forces it to the inside. But Hidley's able to kind of keep his base here by posting his elbow to the mat right here. And so he's still in a good position, head on the inside now on the single. Does a great job of getting to his feet quickly. And so this position, I see Nolf here a lot where it's elbow deep right at the knee. He's on the head and he's gonna run the pipe and it's really effective here. So watch how Hidley, his whole body points to the right. So his head, his hips, both feet point to the right. Nolf has no post there. So Nolf, his only post right now is on his right foot on this side. And so as Hidley forces all Nolf's weight to the other side, he has no way to kind of withstand that force other than posting his hand and falling to his hips. And so there's three seconds left at this point. If Hidley can finish this takedown, it's a win, and he's gonna advance to the finals and pull off really one of the biggest upsets in, in college wrestling history, maybe. Um, but Nolf, he posts his weight to that right hand and he's able to get his right foot out. And so that's gonna allow him to hang on. And so of course, hindsight 2020 here. But if Hidley, you can see right here, he posts, you can kind of see his left hand over here. He was able to grab Nolf's ankle right here. He probably would have been able to get the takedown. Now, that's really easy to say when I'm Monday morning quarterback and seeing this frame by frame in reality. So let's show that in full speed again, really quick. But it's amazing to think how close this was. If he could have secured that other leg before Nolf pulled it out, he would have, would have won the match. Let's just see that one more time all the way through. Nice scoot in. Nolf clubs ahead of the inside. Hidley builds up. Nice and tall. Runs the pipe really effectively here. But Nolf's able to get that right leg back. Locks in a wizard and hangs on. Wins 3-2. So we are now in the finals. Nolf's gonna shoot in here. Comes up on the single leg, looks to sweep the leg out. Gets the hands to the mat, finishes. So we've seen a lot of these by now, but let's go through it. 
So it looks like both guys shoot are trying to shoot at the same time here, kind of like in the last match. This time, Nolf's the, the quicker one. Um, so you can see Berger's level changing here too, also bringing his left leg back, preparing for the shot. But Nolf's quicker, grabs the ankle. I like this little counter by Berger. Um, he swings his other leg through, which allows him to square up at least slightly and have a chance at defending. Nolf's gonna quickly get to his feet with that lace. And he's really trying to kick this leg out. Big swing there. He's gonna miss. Looks like he almost fakes on this one. So we saw this earlier. If you can get the opponent's hands, their weight to their hands, it's a really effective way to finish. So right here, Burger's forced to post. He's able to get back up though, but Nolf kicks again. And even though it's not a super clean sweep of the leg here, Burger's forced to post his hands yet again. And from here, Nolf can start locking up the waist and get his finish. So just once more on this one. Both shoot at the same time, but Nolf's able to get the ankle. Gets to the feet right away. And he's trying to get the hands to the mat. There's once, there it is again. Gets the finish. This next sequence is really smooth. Powerful snap down right into a dresser dump. And he's gonna use the controls to get some back points. So let's see that again. Nolf has this over tie snap that is so effective. I see him do this all the time, even against, I was just, for example, I was just watching him against James Green, which happened yesterday at the US Open. And even against Green, who's a world medalist, Nolf was able to do it effectively. So you can see Nolf has this over tie. His opponent has the right arm collar tie. And he's gonna switch his leg. So the guys that are the best at the snap, at snap downs, it's never just the arms that are that are doing the work, it's the entire body. So as Nolf switches his legs here, he's really kind of generating his the power through his hips. So that's where that's where he gets a lot of the power. So he uses his legs. He's also gonna duck his head. So you can see how his head is now ducking down here. And this is gonna kind of loosen his opponent's hold on his own head. So the opponent has a collar tie. As Nolf ducks the head here, it makes it easier for that collar tie to slip off. And then the opponent's not holding onto anything. And so it's gonna be easy to force that hand to the mat. Well, not easy, but um, easier to force the hand to the mat. But it's so powerful that the opponent's forced to his knees here. So just again, Watch him switch the legs, duck the head, and then powerfully pull down with the, with the over tie. Last time, boom, really nice. Opponent's now on the knees. Nolf's gonna quickly grab that collar tie with his right, but then he's gonna switch. The left hand's gonna find the triceps grip. And watch this angle change. This is a key here. You don't wanna be head on for this takedown. Right now he's head on. Look at that cha angle, change, angle change. Now he's perpendicular because he wants to drive in this direction here, this way. It's almost like a knee pick, but different, but the same kind of idea where you're blocking the knee and then forcing them, forcing their weight in that same direction. And it's gonna be more of a uh, lateral dr direction here rather than straight back. And so the opponent's gonna fall straight to his right hip. And this grip that Nolf has with his right arm is gonna be really effective. He's gonna keep it, you can see that. And he can use that to really bring the opponent's hips straight to the ceiling. He's also going to switch to that headlock grip with his left arm. And he's going to be able to get some back points with this. So really nice chain there. We've got the snap down. To this dresser dump. And then he keeps the grips. He switches to that front headlock with his left. And he's able to get the back exposure and really kind of open this match up. And from here, the opponent's never gonna be able to catch up. So the last thing I wanna show from the finals is a mat return that Nolf does. I see him do this a lot. I don't think he did it in the final, I don't think he did it in the tournament until the finals. Um, but it's a, it's a common way that guys are able to return people to the mat when they get to the feet. So I think it's gonna be worth showing. So let's just show it first. There it is once, and then a little bit later, there it is again. So I see, I see quite a few college guys doing this. 
So Nolf has a, his hands are locked around his opponent's waist. He's directly behind him. And he's gonna turn, he's gonna face towards his right. So you can see his head turns to the right and he's gonna drop to his right knee as well. And his left leg is gonna go behind his opponent's leg here, right, right behind the ankle. So that's gonna block the opponent's leg. And then he uses the momentum he generates from that leg movement to help pull his opponent down to the mat here. Another crucial thing is you can see Nol's hips. Right now they're, they're, he's facing the same direction as his opponent, his hips are pointing the same direction. As he does this, his hips are pointed in the opposite direction here. I'm gonna bring him down. Let's see it from another angle. So right now they're facing the same directions. Nol's got his hands locked around the waist. And it's almost like a scissor motion with the legs. He's gonna turn towards, to his right, drop down to his right knee. His left leg tra uh, traps the opponent's right ankle in this situation. And he brings him down here. So just one more time. Here it is from the other angle, or from actually a different sequence in the match. That's gonna be it for this video. Thanks to everybody that stuck with me all the way till the end. Let me know what you guys think about this format. I may do do more just like this from the tournament. I have, I have footage on a number of other guys. Um, generally, I think this length is a little bit much, but I think it can be valuable to follow a guy's progress throughout the tournament. It can also be kind of fun. So let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you next time.